Ladies and gentlemen, filmmakers and moviegoers alike, welcome to Drink the Casual. I'm your host, Three Cups. Joining me as always is the amazing Dork Dev. What's up, Dev? What up? Not much. How's your day been so far? Uh, not bad, not bad. Just uh, kind of relaxed today because I uh, got called yesterday. Hey, you're not going to work tomorrow. Oh, nice. Because of inclement weather and the truck not being delivered. So I'm like, cool, I guess I'll work Friday. Um, so I just kind of relaxed today. Uh, you know, there was a bad take on the internet, uh, which I feel like I can address here because it's kind of similar to what we've talked about yeah. before. Um, don't gatekeep. <laughs> like, don't be a dick. People, yeah, allow people into your fandoms. God damn it. Or hobbies or things. Just allow people to enjoy things. Exactly. Don't be a dick. <clears throat> people enjoy shit like yeah if they only enjoy the mainstream and stuff so what That's it. maybe they'll catch something else at some point mm -hmm. like i mean my like my list is like my list isn't like I, like i would consider like because me and Steven talked about it if you don't know the tweet like look it up this dude said you know like this list of anime is mainstream and you if you watch these you don't like uh you're not an anime fan um which is bullshit, because, like, there are certain shows that I'm pretty sure this person probably gushes over, like, maybe Attack on Titan, mm -hmm. which I would consider Attack on Titan closer to mainstream than Ghost in the Shell or Gundam. Because mm -hmm. um, it's just more well-known. Yeah. Um, and it's just gatekeeping bullshit that always happens, and I don't get why you do it, because, like, I, like, there's multiple benefits to increasing the, the 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 people who like anime, because if they're watching just the mainstream stuff, that means the studio gets more money to invest in other stuff as well. Um, on top of, maybe they'll catch some other shows. That's how I found shows like Fire Force that I like. Mm -hmm. is, makes sense to me. Don't be dumb. Don't gatekeep. Yeah, don't gatekeep. Yeah, that's that. And now we're moving on. In other news, uh-oh, lag spike. Either way, all's fine. <laughs> oh, I hit the wrong button. And by that, I mean Smooth. I... Smooth. Yeah, and by that, I mean I accidentally clicked on the uh, wrong thing when I was uploading the graphics. There we go. Perfect. All's right. Uh, this week, I have decided to call this week Blood Wars. And it'll make sense once we start talking about the movies. Um, and we're talking about Judas and the Black Messiah and the Five Bloods. I got nothing clever. You ready to start talking about these movies? Let's start talking about these movies. Sweet. So hopping on in here, starting right away with the first movie from today. The new movie from today. It's out of order <laughs> than normal, but uh, because normally we do the new movies last. But I want to do this one first. Hey, I mean, it's your show. I mean, it's I, I, I'm hey, this is kind of the first new because like technically we watched uh, Wonder Woman. But yeah. Wonder Woman technically came out 2020. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the Parasite so, thing, where it came out and released selected theaters the year earlier, but it wasn't released to the public until a few months later. Yes. So, by default, this is the first new movie of 2021 that we've watched. <laughs> um, and what a note to start out on. Yeah. Uh, I think... So, I've said this the last two weeks in a row. And I don't, it's, I don't think I'm going to have to say it next week because we're watching Shaft. Yeah, I was about to say, this is the last week that we could kind of take things serious when it comes well, to the Well, it's movie not just topics. that. It's more that, like, it's the last week I can say, this is shit that should be taught in schools. <laughs> I agree. Yet again. Like, I didn't know about this guy at all in this movie. No, neither I did I. I never heard of his name. I was like, who is he? Why is he important? Like, oh, God, it's just. So, uh, the Five Bloods, um, I'll um, read you the, or, sorry, I'm, sorry, we're doing the opposite order than normal, so my brain jumped there. I know we're, like, I'm on the IMDB for Judas and the Black Messiah, mm -hmm. and I, my brain just jumped mm -hmm. to that one, because that's, like, my, my brain immediately went, like, that's the order we're going in. I don't know why. Anyways, sorry about that. Judas and the Black Messiah, real quick, I'm going to read the bio for it, because, like, it's stuff that, like, if you don't know the history of the bio, might Give, shed some light on it and help or that not the, the the little the little synopsis thing at the beginning mm -hmm. of imdb 
The story of Fred Hampton, chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party, and his fateful betrayal by FBI informant William O'Neill. Um, so this uh, released uh, February 12th, uh, 2021. So that was this week. Um, with a budget of $2 million. Gross U.S. so far, uh, $2.4 million. Okay, pretty darn good. Um, well, wow, this only took $2 million to make, too. Wow. Yeah, honestly, you know, actually, it might be able to survive the box office with uh, COVID. Yeah. Like, this movie is a very low-budget movie, and it's understandable. Well, like, very low but I mean, it's a $2 million movie. But in the grand scheme of things, it's fairly low-budget because all it really is is characters and cast. There's very minimal stunt work. It's all talking and character-driven, and I love it. Um, So, this is another movie, too, that makes me... Anytime I, like... Daniel, uh, uh, K- uh, Kaluuya, Kaluuya, um, I always mess up his last name, but he's been in a ton of movies that we've reviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime I see him, like, and I say it every time, but it just makes me want to see him in more stuff. Absolutely. Because he just, he is a fantastic actor every time. Um, same with Lakeith, uh, Stanfield. <laughs> yeah. Both of them. Like, anytime, like, anytime they're in movies now, like, it's just, like, they are immediately like two people that like if I see them at, in the trailer, I think I'm just going to be drawn to the movie mm-hmm. going forward, just because they they just they both are fantastic actors. They are. Um, also, it like if you see the trailers, you know Jesse uh, Pullman's in this, but man, does that man play a good nut? <laughs> like, play a good sleazy character. It's so strange because like. Yeah, he's. I guess in the end, he's sleazy. But, yeah, like because it it doesn't start that way, but then once he starts hanging out with the worst people. Yeah. Back. Also, there's a surprised Martin Sheen in this movie. Did you recognize him at the beginning? I did. Yes, it was definitely interesting because all that makeup and st- the prosthetics that they threw on him. But man, it looked good. It, he looked like uh, he looked like Hoover. He did. Uh, I was impressed. Um, and I was like, the only reason I knew it was him was at first because of his voice. Like if I didn't hear Martin Sheen's voice come out of Hoover, I would be like, wow, who they get for Hoover in this? <laughs> but it was Martin Sheen's voice. And I was like, ah, the elusive man. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, <laughs> it's you. Man, um, that was, that was an interesting, <laughs> funny movie or not funny movie. Sorry. But his part was super interesting because like he's not a funny person his lines are awful in this film but just seeing him made up that way just made me smile i was like wow makeup is great yeah, I, no yeah no it's a, a fantastic job on the vf like the visual effects team uh for like makeup design and stuff like that like they they fucking nailed that um because, like, if you if you don't know Martin Sheen's voice, you probably will not know that this is Martin Sheen. Mm-hmm. Um, genuinely. Um, but, like, this entire movie, I just, I love everything about it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, there's, it's it's shot very well. Um, it's gripping. Um, and the, I, I do appreciate movies when they are based off of, um, Based off of real events, I do appreciate when they go through and list some of the events that happen afterwards, as always. Mm-hmm. Um, and you learn a little bit more about, like, maybe what's happening to some of them currently or what led up to what, you know, yeah. when they may be passed and stuff like that and, you know, who they live on by and stuff like that. So, no, I think this movie does a fantastic job of ed- educating people on these events um, while not, like... Well, not, uh, like, uh, what, what was, so with, um, not over dram- dramatizing it, like with, um, uh, Bohemian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. It's not, uh, turned into a spectacle, really. Yeah. But it's that's... turned into a dramatiz- it's a dramatization, but like, it's not like over dramatized. Mm-hmm. Dramatized. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you about that because, there was moments in this movie because there isn't 
a lot of like action there. It's very realistic and steadily paced at like, I was wondering if you at any point thought it was slow or like you felt like they could have changed no. things. Okay. No, I, I like it. Okay, do you think I'm just a fucking simpleton, sir? Yes, but. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm just I, I enjoy, for The motherfucker, I enjoy the exorcist more than you do. I'm ask, I know, I get that. Just because I was asking a question doesn't mean I'm calling <laughs> you out, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what a fuck. Um, but yeah, I only friend. asked because there were moments where I was watching this movie and I was like, I could see people getting really blurred with this because I could see that if they aren't engaged in like historical events. Yeah. Like, honestly, if you were, I could, I don't know if I could recommend this movie to people like I would like I can, I will recommend it to people, but like as just a casual viewer, I'm not sure people would watch this movie because it is very historical. It is very factual. Well, at least I assume so. It um, and it like it's just so slow, like evenly paced. It's a steady build up throughout the whole thing. Like, um, I feel like a lot of movies they have peaks and valleys, and this um doesn't really have very, at least to me, like it has peaks and valleys, but they're not huge. Like it feels like a fairly steady story throughout the whole thing until it escalates at its final point. Um, yeah. So well, see, I like. I think it was just going to come down to the person. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to re recommend this to anyone who likes learning about history and stuff like that. That I know, the random v p casual person, I can't say one way or the other because, like, I am a history person. Just so, like, it's just something that I enjoy <laughs> learning about. Um, so I would recommend if someone's interested in that stuff easily, and I'd probably still recommend it regardless to check it out, but. I don't know if me recommending it's going to get someone to go see it mm -hmm. necessarily. I feel like if you're going to see this, you're already drawn to seeing it. Yeah, exactly. Or you're waiting to hear from someone who you know is going to see it and hearing their opinion whether or not you are going to see it. Uh, but 100%, I mean, I really did enjoy this movie. It was, it was good. Like, it's genuinely good. It's just, it's good to have a month of just good movies pretty much. Mm -hmm. A change of pace uh, exactly. from what we've done. Like this, the thing that I was noting is most of the movies we'd watch this month all take t place in the same time period. The only thing that like takes us away is a wrinkle in time. That's uh, and uh, Queen and Slim. Hey, that's true. That one's more modern. But it's to but you're not entirely. But um, the only one that really takes us away from like. The, the similar stories being told here is a wrinkle in time. But yeah, a lot, okay, of these take yeah place, a lot of these take place in the same time period except for Queen and Slim. And um, that's also kind of part of the reason why I wanted to end with The Five Bloods is because it balances between modern time and then goes back into um, the past and talks about the similar events that happen here. So... Uh, yeah. Well, and I mean, like, this one, like, it genuinely taught me a lot that I didn't know about um during that era because like so like in high school like you briefly go over like the black panther party and stuff like that and they're not exactly painted at least where we went to school in a positive light mm -hmm. um i didn't start learning about some of the more positive things that the black panther party did um until like i was an adult yeah. um like the fact that like they gen like they genuinely cared about community. Mm -hmm. They 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 would go out and essentially become community outreaches for people. Um and like how how unfortunate and, and and I'm going to explain what I mean by this. How unfortunately needed they were. Um mm -hmm. because they hey it, it shouldn't come down to a group of people seeing the atrocities and way life is to always uh, to people similar to them to have to stand up and do things to help them and not get help from outside forces. Mm -hmm. Um, it's that's one of those things. Um, that's why I would say it's an unfortunate need. Um, because the need shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. 
it's okay. like i i mean i agree with the philosophy that you know like philanthropy shouldn't be a thing because we should be able to take care of people without needing to have a network of charities <laughs> um but like this just you know informed me more on stuff that i would have lightly covered in high school because that's just the way we were taught it and then any information i'm gathering sense is either through like something like this or like through just like people talking about them so no this is this is really good and i would suggest it to anyone yeah absolutely i would 100 percent suggest this movie to people just be prepared for a slightly slower paced film oh yeah 100 percent. Yeah. but um one of the things too i love i absolutely love the name of this movie like it's so perfect so poetically perfect Especially if you know the story of Judas and like. I'm surprised if someone doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Like, it took me a while to remember. I was like, why would they choose this? to? Oh, yeah. Duh. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, the title gives away the plot, but in a way that makes sense. I mean, also the synopsis does. Too. Going into this movie, like not knowing anything like I always do. I was like, okay, I have ideas just based off the title and what I see and yada, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh yeah, now I remember. I'll make sense. Clicks. It was really good. It was well put together. And especially one thing that I like is how, like, this movie goes a little more dramatic. Like I like with, uh, like I wanted with Selma, how I said I wanted them to go a little more into the harsher side of things. Um, this one does that a little bit more, which I appreciate. And, um, it like, because of that, it makes me enjoy and like really dig into this movie more. Um, especially when it comes to like the situations with the FBI and what they did and what the situation, like, it's, um, like when our, uh, main character of Plemons, not main character, sorry. When our main FBI character, Plemons, talks to his other FBI people and he starts learning, like, the tactics they're, they're using, it's like, oh, fuck you. Fuck that. Yeah? Yeah. Sorry. Cat uh, yelled at me in the other room. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those moments that, mm -hmm. like, it's someone who... Because, like, the way they portray his character... Um... Like, you can see that, like, in a different environment, he probably would be someone who could have been better. Absolutely. But, I mean, you're in the FBI, man. Like, mm -hmm. And he was all, like, he wasn't good in the beginning either. Like, he, he tried, though. He was better. He was definitely better in the beginning than he was by the end of the film. But he still said some things that made me angry. And But it makes sense. It was... Hoover's FBI, so yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, that's Hoover's FBI to a fucking uh, T. Um, shit sucked. Like it was just, it wasn't fair to people, um, by design. Um, and that just sucks. Like people are goddamn people. Treat them as such. You know, like mm -hmm. it's not hard. I don't know. I don't know why it's. You know, goddamn near impossible for people to, uh, over the years, just not be like this sometimes. I don't know, man. It's just, it's frustrating. Um, because it's just another one of those ones where I'm like, well, damn it. Like, why? Why did this happen like this? Um, I don't know. It's just, it's another one of those history things that I'm gonna, uh, take out uh to, like take note of in my head again and hey it's just more information for me to be able to uh to become de debate lord andy and uh you know counterpoint people uh who try to pull shit um and say stupid shit um but yeah like beyond that like i think it's just really worth watching like that's 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 the main point i'm gonna drive home like i think it's a film you should watch if especially if you're interested in history and understanding some things that like aren't as talked about when we're like experiencing uh school taught te uh history mm -hmm. 
So I have a single question. Okay. What did you think? I think I have the right person here. I could be getting my names mixed up. I believe it was Little Little Rail Hallery and his part in this movie. I think it was the FBI badge moment that I'm thinking of. Where he Was that him? I think it was. I'm no. not 100% sure. I could be very well wrong because I wasn't paying attention. Uh at that point in time. I I can't remember who it was in the But, no, oh, I don't think it was. <sighs> but they don't have any set pictures of anyone else on the set, so I can't be like, was this the person? No, was this the person? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to see here, because it's just... Because we never got that person's name, so I don't think so. But what did you think of him and his appearance? How did you feel about that stuff? Did it make sense to you? Did, did it like? Did you understand the implications that happened there? Because I'll be honest, it took me a moment. Like I was just confused. I was very confused. Are you talking about with the the pulling out the thing from earlier in the movie? When uh, when he pulls out the newspaper, and there's the when he opens up the newspaper, when the guy's like, "Hey, tell me, uh, you should have him read this article," and he sees the article that he's talking about. And it's not what it I think it was near the end of the movie. There's, like there's a thing on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like to me at that moment, I was confused because it was a character out of nowhere and we got no context for him. And I mean, it makes sense because that's pro probably what happened to that guy in real life. Like just some random person showed up did what happened and then left like what happened um but to me it just felt so strange and out of place i i didn't feel like it was strange or out of place it's fbi dude mm -hmm. like fbi that's just uh, that's how they were that's kind of yeah man they do shit like that because that's the only way they would have had the thing at the end of that scene when he pulls out the uh the badge mm -hmm. yeah that's the only way they would have had that. Yeah, so, like, I want to know more about him, what happens, why he got there, how he got the badge. Like. He's a, he's FBI. That's how. That, yeah, but. Mm -hmm. But it's not, like, it. Yes, he's FBI. I get that. I understood that. It's just, it, to me felt really confusing because it could have meant a lot of things, honestly, because other people were talking about the badge. I know the badge was with the FBI, but still we don't know if he actually was a person with the FBI or not. We don't know anything. So when he would have gotten the badge. Yeah. No, yeah, that's hundred percent the only one he would have gotten the badge. <laughs> There's so many things that could have happened. Like my mind went like, I, I, I don't want to get in a fight about this. This isn't something that I want to fight about. I just wanted to ask a question. And obviously you understand the point because you're looking at me funny. So I'm just going to drop the I subject. Just, I don't get how you got lost on that. He's just It's just an FBI guy. Mm -hmm. That's 100% what it is. It's just like, hey, this guy's just like, he's a shady dude in a hat and coat who has something that the FBI was the only one who had telling, um, telling, uh, uh, O'Neill to do this because I have this and you know I know that you need to do this because I have this and you know you don't want to do the thing the other the other option to not doing this see what you did already made more sense you explained it in a way that made more sense than the movie did to me just well, I, in that I got that 100% <laughs> well I just that's the context of the conversation the dude the, the the entire context of that conversation comes from the fact that like it's a shady dude mm -hmm. who obviously maybe has because he says the uh, he says the uh, uh, Mitchell's name too mm -hmm. the he says Mitchell told me about you mm -hmm. that's that's all I needed and I'm like this guy's FBI yeah 
Like, I understood that he was with the FBI, but it was confusing to me because of, like, the situation, why it was suddenly a different person compared to the normal situations. Like, Because why, Mitchell's like, not going to be the one to give it. I hear you. And it's just... I don't know, whatever. We're, we're not going to get anywhere at this it's, point. Well, no, it's what more... It, 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 it's... it's um. It's uh, plausible deniability mm -hmm. uh, for Mitchell. I hear you. He didn't give O'Neill the sedative. He had, he maybe hinted <laughs> at it, right? like, hey, you need to do something about this. And then some other guy, probably completely unconnected, unconnected by all means, just happened to be at the bar O'Neill was at. And went, hey, here you go. Also, I have your old FBI fake badge. Mm -hmm. That that is all the context I needed. All right. I was like, dude's FBI, probably like a, it's it, like not like not like Mitchell level, mm -hmm. uh, like because especially during the time he's definitely no way. not Mitchell level based on just who he was. That was part of the yeah. reason why I was confused because everyone else that we've seen in the FBI or anywhere near that level was nothing like that character. Well, it's because, like, like they say at the beginning of the movie, it's set up a little bit for this. Mm -hmm. He's too young. When uh, O'Neill's impersonating the Fed, mm -hmm. he's just a kid, right? The character that shows up later in the movie isn't a kid. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, he's probably Fed mm -hmm. as well. That's an also, an, uh, another context clue to the situation. Well, I got nothing else. Got anything else you want to talk about? No, no. I just, I, I was just explaining the context of that. Yeah, and cool. I got nothing else. Got anything else right, you want cool. to talk about? Nope. All right. Then I'm giving you your popcorn kernels. I think I'm going to give it a solid eight. Solid eight. I can appreciate that. Yeah. I myself am going to give it a seven and a half. Because it's still good. Very good. I recommend this movie. 100% people should watch this. One th I just wish they did a little bit more. Like I always say, I always complain for a little bit more. Um, any department, anywhere, give me more of one thing. Because I, like the cinematography, for instance, while it was okay, I just thought it was that. Okay. Especially when we compare it to the next movie cinematography. That fucking told a story. So... Um... I'm just, I just note, like, looking at your scores over just this year so far, you are almost always consistently lower than me. Isn't that normal? Except for on two, three, four movies so far. I, like, I, part, part of me doesn't I like that you, we've started this list. Yeah. Because you're always like, this non sequitur that has no reason. <laughs> okay, what? I find it in. Okay, fine. I'll stop talking about that stuff. Whatever. Like, I'll shut up. You get so defeated. You're like, eh. <laughs> what I mean by that is like, the. I feel like you're trying to look like you're trying to crack the matrix by looking at our stuff and like. No, I just. I find it interesting. <laughs> so I was just looking at it. <laughs> Because the movies that you liked more doesn't make sense to me that you like more. Because I feel like it would be movies that you would like less. Except for South Park. Um, like that one's a given. But like Wonder Woman. Like you gave that, I gave that a 4.5. You gave it a 7.5. Mm -hmm. um, and then like you're usually like a point range around me. Um, but usually below me. But on both versions of... Um, the chocolate factory you gave it a at least 0.5 higher than me if not more mm -hmm. so i was just noticing that stuff i'm sorry i like looking at numbers and seeing stuff and being like hmm this is interesting okay i got nothing else all right i wasn't trying to like shame you or anything but anytime I mention about like your habits, you're like, fine, I won't talk anymore. God. Mm. And that's not what I'm trying to This is a podcast. We have to talk, Dev. <laughs> I just want to talk about that stuff because you seem to not like it. <laughs>
<laughs> Mister, I'm always sad. <laughs> no, I just, I just, just you went out of the gun being like, you know, you're just always non sequitur. So the five bloods. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, the five bloods. Go ahead. Or whatever, fine, I'll do it. Uh, June 12th. 2020, budget doesn't say because it's Netflix, whatever. <sighs> you, got, you going? Nope. I have... Seems like you had more to say there. <laughs> no, no, I, I did my, my thing. Okay, cool. So, oh, The Five Bloods. I like this movie. I like it a lot. Um, when I was thinking of giving me a movie that was brutally honest and packed a powerful punch, this is kind of what I'm thinking of. Because uh, Spike Lee, if I'm going to give a very poor analogy, is like the Malcolm X of movie making. Because he doesn't hold back for any sensitivity when it comes to his movie making. And um, I feel like he was very gruesome with this. Uh, more gruesome than he needed to be. And it's exactly what I wanted. Because it sh finally, like, it made... Because we talked about this for the past couple of weeks, how... We have learned a watered-down, whitewashed version of history that makes um, the U.S. look so much better than it actually is. And it's the brutal honesty of things like that we see in this movie um, that I've been wanting to see this whole time because that's just what it's been like. It's harsh in ways... It's dramatic and it's gruesome and um I don't I don't want to cut you off. But man, sometimes you just go for gore. I hear you. But it wasn't just the gore. Like it I know, was but the like, context around it. It like I get that. I get that. But you tend to focus on gore. Like I'll be one of the If, if that makes sense. I yes and no. At least the way you say it. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I hate gore repeated movies. Gore like, like, I hate gore horror movies. If it's just about all the blood that's splattered everywhere, that's pointless. That's dumb. Uh, but this movie is doing gore in a different way. Like, the the only scene that I can say was gory it, because Spike Lee wanted to be gory and dramatic was um, shortly after they get their... Just before they find Norm. Um, what's his name? I can't remember. Top of my head. Just before they find Norm? Uh, the guy who plays Eddie. Are you talking about his scenes? Yeah. When his dramatic moment happens, that I think is the goriest this movie gets. And it was very impactful, though. Like, th but that's, like, gore because they constructed it that way. Like, the what I'm talking about is kind of the historical photos that they showed and they didn't cut back on. And the live footage of actual executions that they showed in the first two minutes of the film. Like, this is stuff that I wanted them to depict more of. But I understand what you're saying. The way that I've explained it, it's kind of just been bloodier, more gruesome. But yeah, well, that's the th problem with the last few weeks. Is that's how you sounded like you've been approaching it. Yeah, but that's and the not thing about what the last two weeks too. I get that. But the thing with the last two weeks, there wasn't necessarily what you're expecting from this because it wasn't necessarily war. Mm -hmm. Like this is Vietnam. Yeah, like this is a Vietnam War movie. Yes. And I understand, like, there's, uh, there's a tone behind the Vietnam War that's just perpetuated throughout history. It's even in this film, just based on the two sides and what the top conversations are. But, like, I, uh, w like, 
what I meant was it was just um colder like i didn't i didn't mean i want more blood and i want things i just wanted more like like what i said with um the bridge scene in selma i wanted more chaos not more blood i wanted it to feel more hectic and like things were going crazy and it's um and in this movie i got that feeling but i understand it's because these are also people suffering from like ptsd going back through vietnam where they first got their ptsd so yeah, and i think the same with selma is that like what you're wanting from that scene isn't exactly how it would have at least not the way you're because we talked about battle five uh battle of mm -hmm. bastards right chaos that wasn't gonna happen because mm -hmm. that's not what happened i mean there like i said i've seen worst photos from the press taken of the selma right of the selma bridge than I have of from that Selma movie. So I was kind of hoping for that, like just more truth, less. Well, I mean, it's still true, but like less watered down, like the, I guess the term that a lot of people would use would be like less appeal to white sensitivity. Well, the problem with that is that a movie... So this movie doesn't have to make as much from it because it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. They make Selma was released to theaters. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And wasn't rated R. It was rated, I think, PG-13. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be rated R just to get the chaos that I want. Like, and I think that's the... Like, I've been talking with my family about how I want to learn to be able to articulate my thoughts better. And how I'm trying to spend more time thinking before I speak to be able to get my opinions out more clearly. Because this is one of those things that I'm talking about where I did, never meant I just wanted brutal like blood and guts and gore. That's never what I meant. I just wanted it to be like just more real with what actually happened. And like... like a, and this showed us actual things that actually happened. No, no, I agree with that. I'm more saying that, like, some of those things aren't going to be able to be shown in theaters like that. Because, like, genuinely, like, some of the stuff is just going to be too brutal for an audience to see. Like, for, like a, a normal audience to go to in theaters, if that makes sense. I hear you. Like, for instance, in Selma, I know where this is not this isn't what we're talking about, and I probably should have brought it up then. Like, I would have loved to have seen, like, more implied horse tramplings, because that's what happened. But we didn't really see that. We got to see the horses running through the crowd, around the people, because how it was shot for safety. And then you get to see them swinging batons at people, yes. But at the actual demonstration, there was people running ho over people in horses. And, like, you can portray that with actually without actually showing people getting run over. They just didn't. <laughs> And I understand uh, why. That would have been budget, probably. Maybe. Possibly. Because, I mean, that's going to take... Hey, that's going to take a lot... If you're doing... Depending on how you do it. Because, like, how how would you approach it if you were going to do that? Showing that's, people getting run over. I mean, you just do different things. Like, you. I mean, yes, it would take more money and a little bit more time. But you yeah. just have to stack the shots a little bit more. Where you do one where, like, you have... The people and the horses just running by each other, whatever. You do one, another cut with the person reacting and, like, looking up at the horse that's coming down on them. Then you do another cut with just the horse rearing up without the person underneath them. And then, like, if you want to be dramatic and not actually show someone getting stepped on, you just do a close-up of the hooves and, like, a close-up of someone's arms going up. And then cut to something else before any contact is made. Like... I mean, okay, fair. I'm just more saying, like, the way... Because, like, yeah, that, that could probably have happened, but at the same time, like... I don't know if it was needed in that movie, was, is also the argument I'm going to make on that. You. Like, it's just, it's a different film. It's a different approach on it. <laughs> um, it's like, this one isn't that kind of approach, because it, it's, it's also... It centers around Vietnam, so it's mm -hmm. it's and the real yeah this one's the just real inherently grittier. The with Selma, yeah. there's uh like 
I hate to say it this way, but there's like a romance to it because it's like, well, romanticized, I'll say, where it's about the characters. So it's about telling the story of the characters and what they're going through rather than the story of the event that's happening. So, so like it's romanticized in a way that it's about dealing with the characters and their decisions and their character moments and like what's going on around the people rather than the events. So. Yeah. And I mean, I think that works for what it's trying to be. And in this one, it still focuses more around the people, but since the event is something so harsh and awful, it's just inherently more gritty because like MLK is and Selma is very romantic. Like his story and his tale is one that I mean we idolize really in history books now because he was the peaceful guy, the one who wanted change and would do things for it, just not hurt somebody else. Because he still thought everyone deserved to be treated equally and properly and as people. So um but in this it's all about war and blood and stuff. Um but moving just are we okay to move on past yeah, that? I'm fine with moving on. Okay. That was Sorry, just... I just I found it interesting because like the way you were phrasing it just made me Yeah, I can appreciate uh... that. It just felt like you were more focused on that part the way you were saying it. Thank you for having me try and articulate. But um, other things I want to talk about are I like, like, I love this movie. I enjoyed watching this movie. I'm probably going to watch it again very soon. So I could, like probably in the next few days so I can watch it with my stepmother because she wanted to watch it because she likes Spike Lee. She likes Spike Lee joints. So, um, we'll probably end up watching this again. But, um, that being said, as much as I like this, there are some things that I thought were weird. Um, for instance, the CG in this movie is awful. It's, uh, it's definitely the most rushed part of this entire film. So, uh, like there's a helicopter crash that is really bad. There's, uh, they do CG gun splatter for most of the film. And I could tell that CG gun splatter, especially because there's like moments where like it almost looks like the tracking is off where you can like see the blood move on the shirt, even though it doesn't really. But like it just doesn't stick where it's supposed to be. It just looks weird. Um, I thought some of the decisions when it came to like the storytelling too, like the first hour of this movie was set up and character development and like the backstory to what the film was about really. And then they do this weird transition where it's black and then they do this slow open from the center to where you can see like it, all the different aspect ratios until it's fills the whole frame. And then now we have our main characters going back into the forest. So it's, that's the moment where Is that how apocalypse now starts. I think so. Yes. Because it starts with the slow open as they open in onto the forest. So it's an homage to that as well as being an Apocalypse Now homage in the bar. Um, yeah. So um, it's like it's allusions to storytelling in other ways. So it's kind of clever, but at the same time, didn't like it. He liked yeah, the... but you also, you are very against things not being, like, wholly original. I, like, this one, I thought, like, well, I commented on many things. I liked that he had a different take on this film. Because it wasn't a traditional, just A to B story. I mean, it was an A to B story, but it also had these weird, like, tangential moments where we'll be taken out of the scene for a weird fourth wall break where we'll see Trump... And there's a glowing red arrow that's like, look at this guy. Look at me. <laughs> like, those are weird things that you don't see in movies. And, like, it definitely reminded me of watching, like, a very high-budget YouTube video. Where there's, like, this quirkiness in the editing that pops up. So, like, I enjoyed it. All definitely. But, like, it kind of pulled me out. Like you said, I'm a little more traditional in that aspect. So I was like, huh cool but huh 
Like, it just didn't fit to me, how like, everything else. Which is weird, because Spike Lee was also doing so much stuff with, like, the cinematography. The cinematography in this movie is some of the favorite things I've seen in such a long time. Um, The one scene that made me just bust up laughing was when the... Uh, when we get to meet David and he's introduced to all of the other bloods. So we get to see him. He looks all little because the camera angles all the way up here, looking down at him and he has his little drink where he's sipping out of it. And he's like, hi. hi. And it's like really fucking adorable. And then behind him is the four bloods who are just full body and menacing and like looming over him You're in front of him. Yeah. I mean, in front of him. But also based on the camera angle, they feel like they're looming over him at the same time. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, and no, I get that, but I, you said behind him, and I was like, that I thought doesn't I said make sense. over, so my bad. No, you said behind. I was like, no, we can see behind him. <laughs> <You're> um, <right. laughs> no, I get that. Like, that's a good shot. I personally, so this might sound like a weird thing. But I really enjoyed this movie because I knew what like some of the things that were going to happen. Because there's a lot of um, uh, god damn it, uh, sh uh, sh which one is it? Uh, yes, but it's the uh, uh, the gun. Um, oh, Chekhov's gun. Thank you. There's a lot of Chekhov's guns. I would more there's... call that just foreshadowing. But I yeah, but like there are a lot of things that are like said mm -hmm. so like they're said and they're put there for a reason if that makes sense they're I'm... not just like foreshadowing I consider more hinting at so like um i consider Chekhov's gun and i think the way is like somebody the way i guess the best way to put it is someone walks into a room they scan the room and then while they're scanning you see from their perspective they see a knife on the wall and then it jumps back to their face and they're like, hey, person. And then five minutes later, they'll grab that knife and use it for an attack. That's more what I consider Chekhov's gun. While saying like, hey, I work for a company that removes landmines. I feel like that's more foreshadowing. Oh, well, I'm more talking about stuff that just like, well, because of that, because the landmine is a Chekhov's gun to me, <laughs> the entire time they're out there, there are many moments where i'm like okay tension no yeah. i know it's not in like it's no it's, I intentional. Think it's intentional intentional but like at the same time it's subtle because like it builds to when those eventually mm. happen like i was fucking dying during uh the bathroom break scene when david's like i need the um <laughs> I'm going to go drop off the kids at the Super Bowl type thing, whatever his clever line was. And he walks away. Uh, it was, I was going to go make a bank, uh, deposit at the bank. Yeah. I was going to make a deposit at the bank. I was like, I'm a, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. And that whole scene, because then they brought out the metal detector. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, after the first one, I was like, oh, that's fine. Cause like, I felt that was foreshadowing. I'm going to make a uh, deposit at the bank mm -hmm. and then finding a, a gold bar mm -hmm. that is foreshadowing to me yeah the rest of that scene though is me going check out his gun i know what's out here yeah me that is more i would consider that more of a stereotypical jump scare tactics where like it's foreshadowing but it's the there's the setup and then there's the the switch and then there's the Lack of nothing, and then the, just the sudden jump. So, like, it's still, you're not wrong. At least I don't think you're wrong. But I'm sure somebody who is much more of a film critic would say you're wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, I would also <laughs> say, like, because I don't consider it, because uh, I wouldn't consider that necessarily foreshadowing, because it's like, if it's more than that, it's a tension. Foreshadowing, I don't consider tension building, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, if I'm acutely aware of the thing, I don't consider that a foreshadow. I could say, like, a foreshadow is more hinted at in my book. Like, more... Subtle? S yeah, it's subtle. It's it, it, it's background setup, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So, like, um, a foreshadow for, like, um, 
for like let's go with uh avengers and this is like a really long foreshadow build up is mjolnir and cap uh feige had several movies to set that foreshadow up but that's like an ideal foreshadow me because it's hinted at but it's not necessarily like say, you're trying you're like you're pulling in examples from a cinematic thing that almost definitely will never happen again yeah, but I'm like I'm trying to think of the best way to articulate what I'm trying to say because like it's harder to they're harder for me to remember because they aren't necessarily like in your face if mm-hmm. that makes sense for uh, me. But what I, I would consider say foreshadowing. That, yeah, I would still say or they're like there's a... lines. They're lines. Foreshadowing to me yeah. are lines. But that was a lie. <laughs> like it, I still feel like that was probably the most what we see in this movie, especially when it comes to Lamb and the mines and stuff. I feel like that's the most textbook example of foreshadowing in a film that you could get. I just don't feel like, like, I feel like it's just too, like, I don't know. It just, it feels like there's too much tension from it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean. Like, I just, normally from foreshadowing, I don't feel tension from foreshadowing. uh, But, I mean, like, that's how it works in horror movies. You, you, something's told to you, it's foreshadowed to you that you should be worried about this. And then when the signs start popping up, you're like. Oh, and then you start to feel stressed and worried because you're like, I've been told about this. It's been foretold to me that this is going to happen. And then your mind starts assuming the worst. Like, but I hear you. It, it, yeah, just the difference of uh, terminology, technicalities yeah. at that point. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh, one of the things that I love too, like, is how in this movie there were really no good guys. Like, well, how do I explain? Let me phrase that better. See, like I said, articulation. Uh, <laughs> um, in this movie, I like how when it talks about, like, good guys versus bad guys. We are shown so many numerous examples of there were no good guys and there were no bad guys. There was just people being pitched against people. Okay. And I enjoyed that. Like I said, it's kind of the brutality because we get to see both sides. Like we get to see um, what's happened to our main characters and how, uh, the war affected them and like the aftermath as well as well. But then we also get to see the flip side of how the war affected the Vietnamese people. Um, the stuff that happened to them during the war that we in the U.S. rarely hear about nowadays. They didn't choose to ignore. Mm-hmm. Like that, uh, There, there's a picture in this movie that really caught my attention because it's one of the guys talking about like you killed men, women and the ba- children and the babies. Make sure to focus on the babies for a while. That one stayed on screen for a lot longer than everybody else. Wow. And that's all things that the Americans did. Yeah, no, I I know. Listen, you're talking to the guy who uh, at least when it comes to war stuff. <laughs> I weirdly enough, my most of my history education that I've retained comes to the atrocities of war mm-hmm. and understanding that. Yeah, because I think that's why I'm <laughs> why I'm a lefty is why I uh, <laughs> is because I understand the atrocities of war and what the Americans have done. Mm-hmm. Like the <laughs> one scene that made me really sad was the flashback, which, by the way the flashback thing that they set up with the aspect ratio changes, I thought was really clever. I'll keep but, it. Like, okay. Yeah. Like I thought there was, you, you paused. I, I and wanted, it was a butt pause. I want the part of me wanted to say, but, but it's good. Like I would much rather them use a visual storytelling method like that to, because it's a reminder of how cinema used to work. So we have our modern era. Well, you know, and then four if you, by three. If you, I got a show for you that you might enjoy. It's called WandaVision. They play around a little bit with that as well. You might Absolutely. enjoy it. I understand. Yeah. Um, if you enjoy that kind of cinematography, hmm. this the, the, go watch WandaVision, people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I like I enjoyed that. But continuing though, like 
in that flashback scene, we get to see we get to actually see the translated dialogue of the Vietnamese soldiers as they're walking up, and they're just surprised. And it's a poem that a man's wife was sent a man was sent by his wife. And it's so like saddening to be like, yeah, I'm a person who's upset that I'm here, and then there's these people who are sad that they're here, and they're reminiscing together. And yep, that's war. Mm-hmm. No, I mean that's legitimately that's just that's just it. That's war, man. That's like that's it. Vietnam sh- just sucked too. Cause like, and this movie really hits home on it. Is that like it's another war that America went? Hey, let's throw bodies at it, but not the white ones. Mm-hmm. Um, like I love the the thing that they brought up the radio host lady, and was and they brought up actual statistics that were brought up during the war. How? Now, in the U.S., only 11% of the uh, population is African-Americans. But in the war, over 30% of them were. So. It's almost like in any scenario where whites can uh, get an advantage, they immediately have it. Almost like there is some form of generational, generational, like, earned societal class i don't know what kind of technical term you would use for it it must i Mm. don't know privilege um (laughs) sorry i had a slow beat to it because (laughs) i mean it is one of those things that's just like i mean it's like that's fucking white privilege right there 100 percent. if you if you if anyone denies white privilege, just throw a fucking Vietnam stat at them. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, or an incarceration stat at them. Just, there's there's so many different goddamn things. To throw. This is just another movie that adds that to it. And I also do, like, a lot of the, hit, like, historically important moments that are brought up throughout history mm-hmm. in this. Like, through those uh, cuts um, to important figures in, like, black culture. Yeah. Um, and um, giving a face like a, and a like, name. Yeah, like uh, like David Moses. Mm-hmm. Um, how they talked about him. Like everyone else took fifteen steps to between hurdles. He, he took, took 13. thirteen. Yeah, that's that, like that's a cool story to tell mm-hmm. in a very tense moment. Yeah, but a very good story. It's perfect. Like it makes it's, it's it like a past me would have hated it. Like. If I watched this movie when we first started the show, I would have hated it. Because I'm like, that has nothing to do with what's going on. But it has everything to do with what's going on. Like, it's one of my favorite scenes in this movie. is because it's so tense, but it's so, like, sim- like you're focused. But because you're focused, they take the moment to educate you. And it's yeah. so good. So good. So, like, and, I, and, like, looking at the IMDb score and, like, I'm kind of disappointed because I think this deserves a lot better than a six and a half. Personally. I would agree. I and mean, Metacritic agree. agrees too. They, they're at 80. So I'd say that's an 8.2 out of 10. So, <laughs> um, like I genuinely enjoyed this film. I'm going to watch it again. That is hey. guaranteed. So, like, Why not? I'm going to give you your popcorn. Go for it. I feel like we can talk about spoilers a little bit, too. Absolutely. So, I am going to give this movie uh, eight and a half. I'd, That's about where I was going to put it as well. Yeah. Like, I'd put it up even higher, but like I said, there's a couple of, every once in a while, there's decisions that kind of pull me out of it that I think are a little weird. But even though they're weird, they're both perfect. Like, yeah, sometimes they feel out of place, but other times they're so well placed that it just you'll never forget it. No. Yeah. All well, right. Press the buttons, good sir. Let's get ready to spoil. Oh, what, a what a lovely day! I gotta pull it out occasionally. All right, so it's the button right next movie. to it. Yeah, but it's like I've occasionally accidentally hit it. Now it's a thing that like will occasionally pop up just randomly. You know, I choose when. Yeah, I would take that power away if I could, because it really has no point in being in this. (laughs) 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Like if Sunday I had to choose be- if I had to choose between you naming off random stats for a random reason, are you pressing that button? I would choose the stats. <laughs> because the button makes the button's cool, I guess, but it makes no sense of which we're watching that film. Meh. <laughs> I just like saying it's a lovely day sometimes. It is a lovely day. But we don't need to hear the engines roaring in the background, too. I love the rain that we had today. It was nice. It was light. It was very peaceful. I could sit in it and, like, it only be annoying about 10 minutes in. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, the five bloods. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to talk about the weather in uh, uh, Washington, but. That's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's talk about spoilers. Um, I honestly thought the hardest moment to watch in this movie was the opening exposition dump with all the actual live footage of the atrocities that we performed in Vietnam, especially when it came to the actual execution of the man where we got to see his brains fountain out of his head. Yeah. Like. That was gruesome. Uh, but then it also didn't stop there because um, then we got to see like kids bur- walking away with their skin hanging off from burning. And then like later on in the movie, we get to see a baby who's missing its teeth or its lips, I should say. And all you can it's see missing is its bottom jaw. Yeah. So. Yeah. We get to see some things that were public for a while but kind of stopped floating around for a long time and well he like one thing i want to talk about with this week in particular is that so and it's not really brought up a lot is that like back in like what would have been so you want to know how the 2000s probably would have gone if 9-11 didn't happen hmm. would have been discussing the atrocities happened by hoover and during vietnam and stuff like that and previous administrations, because a lot of that stuff had started to boil to the surface. Um, but 9-11 happened, and a lot of that has just kind of been pushed to the wayside, because it was brought up, but it wasn't addressed. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's kind of getting addressed now. Um, fun little history fact for you on that. And no, this does not mean that, you know, 9-11 was a goddamn, like, hoax yeah, or whatever. I was just it's about to say, that, are like, you going to say that 9-11 was a cover-up? <laughs> no, it's just that, like, its timing was unfortunate because I feel like America would have been on a better path of repair. Yeah. And we, yeah, in the early 2000s, we were starting to see how stupid we were. And then we were hit with more phobia. Yes. And then we got dumber. <laughs> so um, I do appreciate this movie too for like I do appreciate Spike Lee for trying to tackle the like uh the the fact that like um um that uh Paul uh Delroy's uh character mm-hmm. uh Delroy Lindo um character is a uh is a African American manga supporter. Yeah. Um. And because it, it's a statement that doesn't make sense if you say it, because it's like the it's one of those statements that like just it shouldn't make sense for anyone to be them. All right. Mm-hmm. But like it makes less sense. Cause, I mean, because it doesn't make sense if you're lower class and white to support Trump in the first place, but. That's the base, right? It makes less sense to be anyone who's not white and support that man. And I do appreciate that they do try to address it in points. Mm -hmm. I wish they would have done more personally with that. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, I'm fascinated by that stuff because it's just like. It's, you know, what's kind of. I'm also fascinated by politics, so. I hear you. Paul in this movie, like the character of Paul was so strange to me because it felt so eerily similar to my own grandfather. It was a Vietnam War vet. Like, 
who is a MAGA Trump supporter who like it's honestly like the similarities were shocking to me because it like it made sense it because like I could see based off of my own experiences with my own family why someone would end up thinking that way but at the same time it is weird that it is uh, in this movie an african-american man who is doing that but it's all because of his own traumas and like um <laughs> how he blames himself and how he wants anything to get the guilt off of him if he could pass, pass the blame onto somebody or something else so uh i don't know paul was honestly like my favorite character in He's not a good character. Like, he's not a good guy, but he's my favorite character because he goes on a fucking journey where, like, I mean, I wish he, like, there was more to it. Like you said, like, that dynamic of his political aspect was yeah. more, um, like, I wish that was more explained and gone into. But at the same time, this is a two and a half hour long movie. Yeah, it's true. And yeah, and it it definitely like I I made that joke with I was watching with my dad when the apocalypse now open happened. Uh, I was like, hey, OK, the movie's starting because and then I didn't realize it. But that's kind it kind of was that way. It was a new chapter in the movie. Like that's where they would have put the intermission for people to go and take a break if they <laughs> so they can uh, go and do their stuff. And then it was all right. Now we're off into the forest. So. It what it wasn't a completely different movie. Like it wasn't that at all. It was all just explanation and character development. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is I thought I genuinely thought, even though this was a really long movie, I thought it all connected perfectly. Like no, I think it flows really well. Yeah, has a good flow, uh, except for the random cuts on occasion. But even then, it they like I said, sometimes they work. So. Like it's. Just, I mean, for you, they don't work. I, in yeah. some cases, I think they all work perfectly. So yeah, like most of the time, they work great. It's, it's just, and it's weird, and it's not. It's it's so strange. I don't know. It's strange. To it's me. unconventional, and it's not what you're used to. Yeah, it's still good. It's just I would need a little bit more time to warm up to that kind of editing style in a movie. I'll be honest. That's just my own biases. I'll be completely honest on that one. Um, let's see. Other things I want to talk about. The freak. I just love the cinematography in this film. Absolutely. Some of the fa like, it's all subtle. Well, it's not subtle. Sorry. Uh, I just love what they did. Where it's like the zooms during the action and like the moving, the dynamic camera, the constant sweeping motions, or the steady like moments where we get the funny moments with Paul or uh, David. I mean, or um just the i honestly felt like if this movie spike lee was kind of mimicking tarantino and but also okay that's that's a bit of it right yeah it's like it feels part tarantino and part it, um it, it's spike lee but with like tarantino flavoring yeah it like has, sprinkled in there like exactly a little bit of like inspiration from it like the, mm -hmm. the way like tarantino does things and I'm not, I mean, I mean, I'm not a huge Tarantino fan. I think I'd like out of the two, I'd probably put, I think I'd put Spike ahead because I like the movie's stories more from Spike Lee, mm -hmm. um, rather than Tarantino, but it feels like it's got some of like Tarantino's kind of like weird kind of it like weird. He's weird. It's got his weird in mm -hmm. there a little bit. That's a good way of putting Tarantino. He's weird. Yeah. Um, and then I also feels like it has like a splash of Edgar Wright. With um, because it kind of moments kind of reminded me of like, uh, the suddenness of uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World or Baby Driver, which I started that movie. I just haven't finished it. I ran out of time before I had to. Leave. <laughs> I had some movie I need to finish. Is Baby Driver. Um, I for me, I think that's just like Spike Lee just knows what he's doing, and I th like he does cuts like that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, that 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 is something that Spike Lee does. So, like, I'm I want to, but I, I like I guess for me, I think the like, it's also like, 
him and Tarantino are kind of brought up in the same era mm-hmm. of filmmaking. So they will have similarities in their styles mm-hmm. that are just like, you can draw from each other. Like there are going to be times where like Tarantino does something like, Oh, that that's kind of like Spike Lee ish. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, I think that's also just like the era of filmmaking. They, they experienced doing what they do. Um, and it like, because they, they 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 have similar, I'm not gonna say approaches to filming. Because like I think overall, from what I've heard, like I've heard some things from like Tarantino films being like, mm, that's not great. I haven't heard a thing from a Scott uh, a, a Spike Lee film, um, uh, being like, oh well, that's not a good thing, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, like like the the whole like. Uh, what the whole car thing that I remember, I can't remember who it was, but during a Tarantino film where they they they, they had to keep like driving the car, the like, accident or something like that. Can't remember hundred percent, but it wasn't great. Um, but I haven't heard anything like that from a Spike Lee joint, right? Um, I think it's just that like the era of filmmaking that those two are going to be comparable to each other because it's just the i idea of film from that era that like they experienced, I guess. Um, and I feel like they, they, they formed how they make films in a similar way, um, from different experiences. It's kind of cool. Um, cause you can, you can compare their styles to each other. Um, but no, I liked, I liked the editing and all that. It's just, just the movie's good. Check it out. It's definitely I, good. I paid for, I paid for Netflix for it. So fuck it. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Sorry that I didn't pick a non-Netflix original, seeing as you don't have Netflix. Eh, it's whatever. <laughs> it's whatever, comrades. I've already got it. Okay. Um. Let's see. One thing I also kind of like to... Um, when it, speaking of camera angles again, though. Um, when it came to Paul and his racism... Like, every time that they wanted to set it apart tone-wise, they'd give him a different camera angle. And I loved it. Like, they'd be all of them together, and the three of them would be talking and raising their glass, and then they'd have to cut to Paul, who's like, hmm, I don't want my stuff. And then, while he's hesitating to lift up his glass, it's just focused on him until he lifts it, and then it shows all of them. And, like, there will be moments where the kid walks up with, with on his crutch asking for the money, same same scene, but still, like, when Paul looks away because he can't look at him, um, both out being angry and or guilty and or reminded of the things that he's done, um, we, um, he looks away and he gets his own angle for that stuff. So, like, I felt like they, one of the things I loved is they had to, like, they gave his racism um, almost special attention. Be like, it's even in random and other things, it's like, it can be subtle, but it's there. And these are some of the notes that you can find. But keep an eye out. So, I like that. I thought that was interesting. It became like its own character almost. Yeah. Um, no, I see that. Like, like for me, some of the stuff that like I liked were the, um, the moments you can tell, like... I li- I like the shots that with with uh Paul again um were the the tail end of the movie with him um that like with him um at the tail end of the movie where he um kind of starts to lose it Um, and he just, like, goes off the rails and starts, like, fourth person, Mm. or fourth wall breaking at the end. Um, because you can't really tell if it's just him talking to himself, or if it really is a fourth wall break. Mm. I think it's a bit of both. I love that. I loved it. It was great. And especially because there's one moment where he's just in it, he's so focused in his own little speech, and then it jumps to him surrounded by five people with guns and he's digging his own grave. Like he snapped back from his insanity to reality suddenly. Um, 
But the last thing, the last thing that I, or well, two things, two things that I want to talk about. Second, the last thing, Chadwick Boseman. It broke my heart in a subtle way to be like, they're going back for the blood that they lost. And this was the last movie that he made before we lost him. Before the uh, I think lost he him. made one more um, that recently came out. Um, uh, Ma Renee's uh, Black Bottom. Okay. Uh, which is also a Netflix original. Um, that released uh, tail in, like in mid December last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I think he had some stuff. From what it looks like, he has some stuff voiced already for uh, the yeah. What If uh, T'Challa Star Lord thing that they're doing for What If. Um, but I know what you mean. Like just seeing him, like shit, man. Like what a fucking wonderful human being and actor that just passed way too soon Mm -hmm. and just like them going back for him was just like man huh yeah it made me cry because like literally i shed a single tear when i was like oh damn man but like um the thing too like i saw this ma rainey's black bottom I almost recommended this movie, but I couldn't think of another good movie to go with it that was music related. The only like the the one that popped up to my mind right away was the Green Book, but um, just based off of how uh, the the directors and cast talked during their award ceremony, I didn't want to watch that. Yeah, because if you if you don't remember that. I don't think a lot of people do because I, I mean, they might, but um, what ended up happening is when they were accepting their award during the Oscars, they said that um, even though the movie was technically about Dr. Donald Shirley and like his history about going from place to place and being a musician, they were saying that uh, Tony Lip, the played by Viggo Mortensen was really the only reason why the movie was made. Like, it was all on him, and if it wasn't for him, they never would have had a film. Yeah. Again, that's why, like, there are better... Again, that it's it, from what I heard, because that movie was very, uh... Um... A, uh... Whitewashed retelling mm-hmm. of the story. Exactly. So um, that's part of the reason why I decided against Hey, man, you know my opinion on uh, the awards. Hmm. You hate them. <laughs> uh-huh. So, uh, but that that being said, though, um, how did you feel, since we talked about Chadwick Boseman, how did you feel about the twist ending where we find out that Paul is the one who killed Storm and Norman? Shot coming from a mile away. I agree. But I'm. it makes sense. I mean, dude, like, Friendly Fire happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, not a lot, lot, but, like, it happens. Um... And like in that like in that kind of firefight where yeah. you just yeah, shot at from every angle, that one comes yeah. out from behind you. Just one 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 stray bullet. That's all it took. Like and that happens. Um like I, I saw that coming away. I thought he I thought it was gonna be that he purposely did it. I kinda did too. But it being but it accident, makes more sense. Yeah, it was much better to me. Like I kind of figured that they got in a fight at some point and they killed them all. Yeah, but no, it being an accident, him kind of having to deal with that the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Especially too, I loved how like it was an accident, yes, but then when the bodies fell, uh, the Vietnamese lady that shot at them landed on top of Norman. And like, because Norman was the first one to fall because he was hit first. Like, like no, he was hit second, but I saw it the other way because he went across this way, and Norman was here, and she was over here. So he went diagonally no, across turned... them because he I had to he turn back. around. I thought he turned. I thought he turned uh, right. I thought he turned left. So, ah, uh, we're not. I don't hey, want to get into this. Look at us. Yeah. Hey, uh, listen. It's a really easy way to fix this. I'm gonna just 
Either way, I just liked that Norman was the one who ended up having somebody land on top of him. And, like, it was just a nice to sit. Like, it's so minor, but, like, I thought it was better. Like, it just amplifies the guilt that he feels. Oh, yeah, 100%. Sorry, I'm signing into my uh, Netflix real quick. Yep, your new Netflix account, yes. Well, it's not my new Netflix account. It's just my Netflix account. Ah, oh, fuck, I'll look it up on my phone. <laughs> I'm not signing on the PC yet. I don't remember what the password is offhand. Uh, am I going to be mad at you? Did you watch this movie on your phone? Yeah, because I was doing other stuff. I'll be mad at you later. <laughs> oh, shut up. Get off my fucking... Get off my goddamn fucking dick, bitch. I ain't on your dick, bitch. All right, let me get there real quick. <laughs> what the? There... Yeah, he goes right to left. So he turns this way. Okay. It's the Vietnamese first. I'll believe you. I'm not going to. Either way, I still like that Norman was on the bottom. Norman the power bottle. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything uh, else? I got nothing else. Okay. Oh, what'd you feel about the legless kid story in the beginning? I mean, it's just a kid doing bullshit. I thought it was such a fucking, like, I was like, oh, you, oh, you child. <laughs> like, I'm going to beg you for money, and then I'm going to trick you with the money you gave me. Like, fuck. <laughs> like, that's just my assumption. We don't know if it's actually that money that was used, but still, like... I was mad at him. <laughs> but that was also before we got to see all the dark things that happened. Like, at at the end of the day, when this movie is said and done, would you call this a successful trip? No. Me either. They go into Not this forest, it's like, supposedly, according to the government, to collect one body. And they exit with three less people. Like, yeah. something's wrong here. And I'm surprised. Like, I know this is a story and nothing happens. But, if like, I feel like if this actually happened in real life, this would 100% cause an international accident. Because three U.S. Army or four veterans go out into the forest and only one of them comes back. Like, whew, that could have been some shit, man. <laughs> Well, you pay off the witnesses, and uh, everything's fine. Hmm. Sure. Hey, that's how that works. But, like, then yep. they have questions, because, like, they go, they went on this trip to get Norman's body back, and they did. That's awesome. But then, what did they do with Eddie's body and Paul's body? I mean, Paul's body was buried, but still. <laughs> and then, what did they do with, uh, what's his last, what's the last character's name? Fuck, I'm no longer on the page. Uh, uh going back. Uh, and then Melvin. Like, I especially like the Melvin sacrifice because I'm pretty sure it was him saying he wouldn't be the one that jumps on a grenade to save people. And then he did. So. If anything, I could be wrong. That was a line in the very beginning of the movie that was a throwaway. Yeah. See, that's foreshadowing. Um. Uh, so, yeah. I do love, I, like... I watched, uh, remember how I said I watched the History of Curse Words documentary yeah. on Netflix? Um, one of them is, one of those episodes is about the word shit, and they have Isaiah Whitlock as a guest star on it, because that's like his word. If, uh, uh, if fuck motherfucker is Samuel Jackson's word, then Isaiah Whitlock's word is shit. <laughs> And then I thought it's and just having him say it. It's just one of those things that he says in every movie. Cause he's got the e, e, e like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. But then, yeah, it just makes me wonder like, 
What happened to those bodies? Did the U.S. government come and get those bodies out too? Probably not. So no, they don't. They don't worry about those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. I'm getting. Uh, but yeah, it just seems like there's questions that need to be answered. But at the same time, we don't need to have them answered because it's not a part of the story. Not the main point. But I still have questions. It's yep. not going to, I'm not going to detract any points from the film from it, but it's because that's not the point of the movie. God damn my angry. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, other things I want to talk about though, last, really probably the last thing. Um, Seppo, when he blows up. Um, do you think, how many minds is too many minds? I don't know. There's only two. There's two. Yes. I was going to ask, um, do you think we needed more explosions? No, no, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where you're going with this. I'm, just, I'm literally just asking, do you, uh, more explosions maybe? Yes. No. Would it be out of taste? I, I don't think it mattered. All right, cool. <laughs> more, more spectacle. Do we, <laughs> we didn't need it, but would you have liked more? I mean, the movie's good as is. I don't need... I don't think that's going to change anything. Okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for answering my question. So, uh, I got nothing else in this movie. Anything else you want to talk about? I have hadn't had anything for about five, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I've noticed. that on the, I, like, on the episodes that I really enjoy a movie, you do a lot less talking. Well, because you have more to talk about, and then I have less to talk about because you already talked about it. <laughs> I like the interactions, though. I, I like- know, I try, but, like, there are certain times where you've already iterated everything. I'm like, there's nothing I can add to it, so. Okay. I'll stop talking about everything. I'll just talk about no, something. God, shut up. Fuck off. <laughs> so, um, I guess we're moving on? Yeah. All right. Can you press the button? Yeah. Great button. So, we're in the news. Um, I don't know. I've, lots of news this week was, have you seen Jared Leto as the Joker? And we live in a society. <laughs> that is another one for the board of memes entering movies. We had originally, oh, I don't have the button, but... I'm the juggernaut, you bitch! We had that. We had the Sonic the, uh, picture entering the Sonic movie. There's the Spider-Man meme getting into, into the Spider-Verse. And now there's We Live in a Society. Mm-hmm. Art imitates life. Ah! <laughs> but it... it uh, I'm you- not... So I watched Greg and Tim react to this, right? From kind of funny. Okay, I was about to say Greg Miller. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was gonna say, are they gonna talk about how this could be like a subtle, um, uh, subtle um, hint that they believe Gen Xers who are making these jokes are gonna become uh, homicidal crazy people? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just no, spitballing no. here, literally. Yeah. What the fuck was that from? I'm literally just. I just wanted to say something. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. I'm just like, maybe Zack Snyder hates the younger generations. And by no, throwing in this meme line, he's trying to say that the younger generations are going to grow up to be just like the Joker. I don't know. Welcome. No, I think you're the only person who has thought that. Welcome to Right Wing Analysis. <laughs> I'm your host. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're. I'm going to get us canceled. Stop. Stop. Okay. What I was trying to say was that I was watching Greg and Tim react to the trailer. Mm -hmm. And Greg talked and Tim talked about the fact that, like, if you're not already a fan of what Snyder has put out before, I don't know where the fuck that tangent went through. You threw me for a fucking loop here. I'm so off of what I was going to go off of now. Like, I am so. I had it, like, formulated, but now I'm frustrated. Why are you frustrated? Because it's just, it's not, it, it, I had a flow to it. 
I thought you had something that would have been productive to it. I, uh, it was a conversation. I was adding to the conversation, just not. No, you weren't. You were. You weren't adding to the conversation with that. Yeah, I totally was. I was talking about how some people could have taken that not line and analyzed it in a weird way. Who? Who would have taken it that way? I fucking don't know. <laughs> you're the only. You're the only one with this take so far. Now, I'm not saying it's my take. It's a bad take. <laughs> it's a bad take. Sure. <laughs> I'll get, sure, I agree with you. That is a bad take. Whoever has it is should look into their life sources. But like, oh my god, that's not my opinion on what's happening. <laughs> I know, but it's just a bad take that should not have. It's such a you got on me for non sequiturs. That was the biggest non sequitur of the show. I'm I'm, ta- I'm still talking about Jared Leto and the Joker. Yeah, and I was talking about movies. You mm-hmm. want is that how is that what we're gonna compare it to? Sure. <laughs> oh well do you remember <sighs> so yeah let me okay let me restart so i was watching kind of funny reacts to the snatter cut trailer greg and tam and they talked about the fact that like um if you didn't already like the snatter cut stuff from before you're probably it's probably going to be more of the same but if you didn't like the justice league movie you're probably going to like this if it's more of the same from the, the other snatter cut stuff so, I already know I'm probably not going to enjoy this movie. And this trailer did not help. I have a feeling that it's just going to be a long, long version of the Justice League movie. With a slightly restructured skeletal system. And more meat. <laughs> What's it like? Yeah, I don't... It's weird. I do suspect this movie is going to be better. The Snack Snyder's Justice League is going to be better than the original Justice League movie that we got. I do believe that, personally. But I don't think it's going to be super amazing. Like, it's not going to be night and day better. It's, no, no, it, it's not. Yeah. So, like, I, when I think of this movie and how it's going to happen with it, like, it's going to be better. But, yeah, it's still a Zack Snyder movie. And if you don't like Zack Snyder, you're not going to like the movie. Um, I personally think it'll be okay. I'm like, I've been seeing more and more things about it. And I'm like, that seems questionable. Like, so a lot of it honestly just has to do with character designs. But um, at the same time, I guess they're better than they were before. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> All right. Um, other news things like there's a lot of talk about stuff starting up, but none of it's really super interesting to me. Like CW is not doing a they decided that they have canceled the Wonder Girl series, so they're not going to do that. But they're in talks about working on Iron Fist season three. Um, what? According to this article. CW. Yeah. For Iron Fist. Well, it might not be the CW, but whoever makes Iron Fist is talking about season three of an Iron Fist. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense because there wasn't a season two. Apparently, they're going to get a season two and then a season three because they're, it's talks about season three in the works here, according to this article by SlashRope.com. Did Iron Fist have a second season? Hold on. It's talking about just third seasons, not saying anything about a random second season. There was a second season of Iron Fist? Man, that show got no love. Damn. Um, um I mean, that, that probably... Uh, who, like, they're in the same sentence of an like, article together? Yeah, it's literally... Um, Wonder Wonder Girl series not happening at all at CW, comma, Iron Fist season three details and more. Oh, is that the header? Like, that's the, yeah, that's the first thing. It, okay, uh, that makes more sense. I thought you were reading, like, a paragraph from oh, the article. <laughs> and I was like, that sentence makes no sense. Gosh, Dev, why don't you just read my mind? <sighs> um... Like, other random things. Like, they could be interesting, but they're not something, like, that I think we could talk... Like, we'd be super interested. Well, one thing I think we might be super interested 
maybe two. Um, rapid fire stuff would be they're gonna make a Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV show. Um, so cool, I guess, just to see two spies fight each against each other. Um, we've got a Paranormal Activity reboot happening. So, oh fuck! Yeah, I think that's dumb. Um, we'll see. We'll probably watch it. If I'm being honest, I'll hate it. I damn you! It, I mean, it's a horror movie, supposedly. No, but damn you! And it's a genre that, that I means... will most likely hate. But that means we're gonna watch the other ones. At least one of them. <sighs> um, other rapid fire news here. Um, there's behind the scene talks in Marvel about who the villain will be in Captain Marvel two. There is no, there's no discussions about like, according to the board that I'm reading here, same, same place slash film.com. They're saying that there is no like leaked information on who it could be, but apparently DC or Marvel's execs and Disney are talking about what they're going to do for Captain Marvel two now. So that's interesting. Uh, but the thing that you might find interesting is they're making a sequel to face off face off two. Uh, Why? Remember how we mentioned we'd want to see a movie where one actor played another actor just because? Like, didn't we no. mention that at one point where with like the glass movie, how we wanted to see um Oh, what's his name? God, I'm bad with actors' names. James McAvoy? Yeah, see, we wanted to see like James McAvoy pretending to be somebody else and somebody else pretending to be James McAvoy. I remember we had that conversation. I don't. Yeah, I remember that because we were we we're like, it's so weird to see Nicolas Cage and John Travolta in the same movie because they have two completely different energies. But then we have one guy pretending to be one guy while he's actually yeah, like we have this weird dynamic. And we were like, could you imagine? Like, I remember this, but then again, I am crazy. So but I brought that up because I was like, I wonder who's going to be on the cast. Like, who's going to be the main sec characters? Like, I think that's kind of it. I mean, it's a 90s movie that doesn't need a sequel. That's true. It doesn't need a sequel. Not wrong. I genuinely do not know what they would even do with it. So, I... I mean, it's... Like... There... I can... I... If it comes as a direct sequel, nothing makes sense. Like, there is no direct storyline plot that I can think of that directly connects it to the first movie. But the premise is an interesting premise. Like had people switch their places and faces and like act, pretend to be different people. Like it makes sense to me as an interesting idea that they'd like to do again. Like I could see actors being like, I want to make this kind of movie. So, um, that's probably what it is. Honestly, it's probably just two actors being like, I want to play this part and I want to play it against this person. And let's see what we can do about that. And most uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm, I think it'll be interesting, but. I'm not going to hold my breath. I understand. Um, yeah, I haven't really got anything else here. Uh, there's going to be a documentary on Britney Spears life. Woo. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, yeah, I've got nothing. You got any cool news? No, no, I have no cool news. All right. Do you have any lame news? No. <laughs> All right, Steven, stop trying to extend the show to two hours for the love of Christ, man. I'm not trying. Oh, I just like our. I'm, you, I like talking to you. I'm sorry. No, but I also have a Minecraft server we need to switch over tonight. All right. I've got nothing else. And Jay has limited time to do that. Why? Because he's on the east goddamn coast, and it's already fucking 11 there. Fuck! Okay, everybody. Thanks for being here. You're awesome. Really still up. Wait, yeah, you're not going to talk about at least next week's movies? Next week's movies are Shaft, Shaft, and Shaft. Um, I was going to get there, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you you started the outro before talking about next week. Well, I'm trying to wrap things up here. You want me to wrap it up? <laughs> <or not? laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, we're watching Shaft, Shaft, and Shaft. Thank you, everybody. You're awesome. I'm Driving Dev Mad. And um, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you guys next week with Shaft. Okay. Bye. One bad mother... <laughs>